Hello, and welcome back to another uh, RPG map and image creation. I'm Josh, and we're going to be continuing this tutorial series um, with the, our regional map creation. Um, I believe that this is episode six. So far in the tutorial, we have created a landmass, uh, a couple of different ways that we can do mountains. Uh, we've added some textures and done some um, other interesting things. Uh, so we're going to get our landmass completely ready uh, for our next step. And uh, what I'm going to show you to do today, uh, as you can see here, is uh, we're going to do some uh, variations in here and we're going to uh, create some textures uh, similar to the same way that we did before uh, for the water. But we're going to do it for our land and we're going to make sure that uh, we get a little bit of color variation. Uh, we want it to get a little bit lighter as it goes in. Uh, you can see that I have... Um, uh, added some additional mountains and we'll be working on those uh, more as we progress as well um, but we want to get our land all ready uh, for the introduction of uh, different types of elements like forests and uh, other foliage uh, that we might be able to see from this distance uh, we're also going to be adding some more texture to our water today and uh, we're just pretty much prepping um, so that in our next episode uh, we can really start to make a difference into our image here so let's get started. Uh, let me just turn off uh, some of the things that I had done previously so that we can go step by step and do this together. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do um, in this creation process, I'm just going to turn off uh, everything that we've done so far. Uh, let me just group, whoop, let me just group these together. I'm going to rename this uh, C. Uh, and we're going to start to uh, make sure that we keep everything quite organized here. Yeah, so that is a mountain. We'll put that in there. And we're going to put this all in one group as well. Call that land. And now with this uh, blank uh, area in here, uh, let's make a new layer. Uh, somewhere down um, above the sea, but below our land here. Uh, we want to make sure that we have black and white as our foreground and background color. And we're going to come up to our filter, go to render and uh, clouds. And this is going to randomly create a black and white kind of image here. And uh, which is great. Uh, this is kind of what we want. We're going to go back up to filter and go to render and now to uh, difference clouds. And you can see that this uh, takes that information and it turns it into um, a lot of uh, more line oriented kind of design work. Hitting control I, uh, we're going to change it to look more like this uh, lightning kind of effect. And we're going to go back up to our filter and this time we're going to go to stylize and we want to do emboss. And look what we've done here. Uh, we have inadvertently turned that information into a lot of uh, different kind of textual information. It's basically taken that uh, um, what could be considered a height map and turned it into an actual uh, 3D kind of image here. Uh, it's 2D but it's kind of like a 3D representation. We have our light here. Uh, we want to maintain our same light source coming from the top left. Um, our amount is all adjustable and so we can make this as uh, as um, more or less of kind of an impact on what we're going to be creating here, as well as the height. And uh, as you can see, it can get uh, pretty out of control here. We want to keep it pretty low, uh, somewhere around five or six. Let's do five. And our amount is going to be, uh, yeah, 100 should be pretty good. Uh, from this particular image, uh, we can now um, add this into our land mass. And if we turn this back on, and we can see it here, uh, you know that we have all of these layers that are set to um, using that original land creation that we had done as its mask. And so uh, we're going to take this, and I'm going to duplicate it first, and then I'm just going to drop it in here, right? It's, it's going to be in between all of these things. And you're not going to be able to see it right now because of this one. But if I turn off the, the one that we had done previously, you can see now that it's uh, located all in through here. Now we're going to do a couple of fun things with this. And 
uh, the first thing that we're going to do here is um, I'm going to use one. I'm going to actually do create two of these layers. And the first one is going to be um, the main kind of uh, increase in texture on the inside here. And then we're going to add another one. And that's going to be a little bit lighter around the edges. Hit control click um, on our original land mass. And that's going to bring up uh, the selection of all of those pixels. And if we come up here uh, to our selection, uh, we can modify that and we can contract that in. And maybe we want to contract it. Um, uh, let's do 50 pixels. And it's very angular right now. And so we want to change that. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to go back to this uh, modify and we're going to smooth it out. And we're actually going to smooth it out by another 50 pixels. And you can see that that rounds that all out. And the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to feather it. And we want to feather that out about 20 pixels. And now uh, if we hit control J, um, we can kind of pull this out of here. What we actually done is created a nice sort of gradient um, around the outside uh, towards the middle here. So the first thing we're going to do uh, once we have this in here is uh, we're going to um, really push the um, contrast of that particular uh, texture. And so we're going to hit control L. This will allow us to uh, increase our, our whites, our highlights and our shadows. And that's what we want. We want to really kind of push uh, some of these shapes. So the more we move this into the middle here, the more that's going to happen. And when we hit OK, if we change this down uh, to a screen layer, you now see that we've created a really nice kind of texture. We can bring down its opacity. Mm, let's do 40%. And as we zoom out, we've now have this nice gradient that turns into a nice texture as we move along here. Uh, we can turn this one back on. Uh, we're going to set this one to an overlay. And you can see that this has quite a lot of uh, effect across the entire image. It's a little bit too much. So we're going to bring this down to maybe 20, 15, 20%, maybe even 30%. Let's see how this looks up, up close. Fifty five seems to work really well in this particular image. Because these images are made from the uh, same base and they are lined up perfectly, they actually uh, help accentuate each other. And so now when we put our mountains back in, uh, you can really see quite a lot of difference in there. Our mountains are going to have to be readjusted, but uh, uh, we have uh, drastically increased our um, elements in here. Let's turn our uh, oceans back on here. And we might need to make some uh, additional ad adjustments here. 40% is a little bit much, so let's bring it down to about 25. And now uh, with our last layer here that we have, uh, we're actually going to attach it uh, down in through here and we're going to do something similar with our C here. And so if again, if we go into our um, overlay, uh, what we actually do is transfer that information uh, directly into uh, all of the colors that are under, underneath of it. We can make a new layer with Control J, copying the one that was underneath of it. And with this one, we're going to make this a multiply layer, but we're going to put that underneath. So you're getting a lot of uh, information through there. And now what I'm actually going to do with this is I'm going to uh, do a selection here. Uh, we want this to be not quite as so abrupt as we look around this. And so uh, I'm going to first blur it out a little. And I'm going to do the same. Uh, I'm actually going to copy this first and hide it. 
Well, let's just keep the original. Blur this one as well. Oh, that's a little bit too much. And we're going to blur this maybe too. Now when we drop these down below, um, you're going to see that all of this information that we had put in here previously uh, comes right back. So we're, I'm going to grab my elliptical. I'm going to come up to this corner and I'm going to pull it all the way down uh, to this other co corner here. So we get this nice oval around our entire landmass. I'm going to go up to my selection, modify it, and I'm going to feather it. Uh, let's feather it 50 pixels. And now, if I select the inverse of that, all of these out areas here, we can have a nice kind of gradient as these things move out. And then uh, we can always adjust them if we need to pull these out or get a little bit more of that information. The next thing that we want to do is uh, I'm going to, uh, when I come in here, I'm going to do a little bit of a gradient from all of the edges here. And I want it to kind of um, blend in from the outside. We want it to be darker on the edges and lighter as we move towards the landmass. And that's going to give us um, a little bit of feeling of depth of the water and help push the contrast a little bit as it moves forward. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, switch over to a brush and we're going to go to just like a nice soft round brush and make it nice and large. I'm going to make a new layer. Um, we want it to be a multiply layer. I'm going to pick um, one of these highlight colors and I'm just going to round these edges. Just begin to add some of that depth. And we can click outside of the canvas and add some information there, some color. So we darken that up. It really gives it a sense of uh, depth as the water increases in size. And turn our mountains back on. We can see that our mountains now are a little bit um, low on the um, contrast uh, to the rest of the image as we've started to uh, build up some of this stuff so that we can uh, now uh, come in here and we can change that as we as we move along here we want to make sure that everything stays nice and clean and crisp and and works well i want to go back to our mountains here So it looks like if we go let's just zoom out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, if we go 30, uh, 1.12 and 220, uh, that should look work exceptionally well.
And we might want to keep some of these smaller ones, uh, something along these lines. We now have our land and our water ready to go. Uh, we have a pretty good base here from which we're going to expand upon. And so in the next episode, we're going to begin to uh, put in some forests and uh, some other types of uh, elements that's going to really bring out the, um, the whole map that we are creating here. Um, if there is anything that you guys want me to cover or if there's any information that I haven't uh, explained fully, please leave a comment and uh, I'll be sure to address that. Uh, also, uh, if there's anything that I haven't covered that you'd like me to, um, you can certainly uh, put it in the comments below as well. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you on the next episode.